Hi everybody. So this is our first official video on our channel and the topic is going to be grooming tools, supplies, and things that I keep in my grooming tote, which stays at home and also goes with me to dog shows. So I'm going to try to break this down um, into different categories. And the first thing I want to say for sure is do not get overwhelmed with the amount of things I own because number one, I'm crazy and I love to shop. And number two, I have multiple dogs that are going to dog shows. So not everything in this box uh, is going to be anything that you need, but I just want to go through all of it in case anything seems like it might be something that would be uh, great for your dog. Um, so I am going to cover everything in the box, but do not feel like you need to go out and buy everything in the box or that you need to buy the brands of the things that are having my box. I'm not endorsing any specific brand necessarily, though I'll tell you the ones that I have found that I like and, um, and why, and we can kind of go from there. So, all right. So we're going to start, uh, I think with general items that I do think everyone should have if they're going to groom their own peak at home. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is not something I'm going to show you because it's downstairs in my grooming room. I didn't want to tote it up, but I think everyone who's going to groom their own peak at home needs to buy a forced air blow dryer. Um, it'll probably be your biggest money purchase if you're going to buy grooming stuff, but it is worth its weight in gold. There's two reasons. Number one, forced air dryers dry the hair by blowing the water out of the hair, not by heating it up to the point where the water evaporates. If you use a human blow dryer on your dog, um, unless it has a cool setting, you're 100% putting way too much heat into your dog's hair for two reasons. Number one, heat damages the hair. And number two, you have a dog that has a vast tendency to overheat anyway. And you really just don't wanna put excess heat into a Pekingese that does not have a muzzle uh, to dissipate heat uh, properly to start with. It's just a breed characteristic. So if you do use a human blow dryer, uh, only use one that has a cool air setting, and even then, um, it's not gonna have the second feature that a forced air dryer has. So the second reason a forced air dryer is great, besides the fact that it blows the water out without uh, heating the dog, is uh, that it's basically a version of brushing or combing your dog with air. So it blows the air at a velocity fast enough that it gets the air all the way to the skin, down to the undercoat. It's gonna blow out the dead undercoat on your dog. So if your dog is shedding, which peaks do seasonally, um, if you're feeding your dog good food, uh, your dog should only really be blowing a lot of hair out about twice a year. Um, if they're shedding year round, you might want to look at your nutritional status of your dog. Uh, but we can talk about that in another issue. So anyway, if your dog is normal, um, the blow drying itself is going to remove all of that hair such that you will not have shedding in your house. My dogs do not shed at all as long as I keep them on their regular blow dry and bathing program. I bathe my dogs between once a week and once every two weeks uh, depending on how dirty they get and what their show schedule is. So if they're going to a show, I always groom them with a full bath right around five days before the show. That gets them time enough to, for their hair to dry out so it's not too soft because right after the bath, their hair is very soft and you don't want it to be soft at the show because the show requirements for a peak are that it has a harsh coat. So I always bathe about five days before a show. If they're not going to any shows, I let them go about two weeks because I do a lot of brushing. Um, but they still get stinky enough usually after two weeks that they get a bath every two weeks. They also run around my yards and my woods because uh, I have a big property and I let them do a lot of playing. So they get kind of undercarriage or butt baths anytime they come in and they're dirty because um, you just dirty hair doesn't grow, clean hair grows. Some very top breeders and showers have told me that mantra multiple times is that clean hair grows, dirty hair breaks. Um, so a lot of the old wives tales that over bathing a dog, you know, say, oh, it'll take all the oil out. Don't bathe a Pekingese more than once every four months. That's all to me nonsense. I, and anything I say here is just personal opinion, but um, I've gotten it from a lot of really good top people in the breed. Uh, the show dogs get bathed all the time. And in fact, my vet told me, and I quote, I've never seen an over bathed dog, but I've seen a lot of really dirty ones. So take that for what it's worth. So my dogs do get bathed fairly regularly. 
So I guess the first thing I'll say before I start showing products is, is also the, the products I use for bathing. Again, I'm not going to show because it's down in my room, but I use um, Isle of Dogs, I-S-L-E, Isle of Dogs Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, the shampoo I use is called the um, uh, Stand, and then the conditioner is called Build, and uh, they're the Salon Isle of Dogs products. Uh, they work really well. They smell amazing. If you like a perfumey smell, my dogs kind of smell like uh, the cologne section at the department store. It's a really, really nice smell. And those two, Stand and Build, are specifically for a coarse-coated dog that you want to have a lot of volume. So that's what I use. Uh, every single time that I bathe. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to the products that I think everyone should have in their box if they're going to bathe and groom their own dogs. Number one, this little miracle right here is a nail trimmer. The brand is Aussie Dog. Let's see if I can get this on the camera. I don't know if it's going to focus, but it's A-U-S-S-I-E dog, as in Australia. It's got a little kangaroo on the symbol. Um, Aussie dog professional tool. I bought this at a dog show based on the recommendation of a few people, and this is a miracle. I've used nail trimmers with every dog I've ever owned for the last 15 years, and this thing is something different. It was relatively expensive. I think it was $20 or $25, um, but it cuts the nails like as if you're cutting through butter. Um, so there's no resistance. There's no like snap moment where normally on a normal trimmer that I've used, that moment where you squeeze the nail and it kind of pops, and it makes the dog jerk their foot back. That doesn't happen with this. This is amazing. It's literally, you just like, shh, it's just like cuts through it like butter. The dog doesn't even notice you're doing it. So thousand percent recommend everyone should buy one of these. Number two, continuing on the nail trim uh, trend. Um, this is uh, Super Clot Veterinary Formula Clinical Care Gel. So if you're gonna be cutting your dog's nails, you're eventually going to cut one too short, unfortunately. We can do a whole video on foot care, but when you cut one too short, this is gel that stops the nail from bleeding that doesn't sting. So if you use the powder, which is the most common thing, the styptic powder, that stings really bad. So then the dog is like a little bit traumatized that you cut the nail too short. It might hurt that you just cut it too short. Then they're double traumatized when you put that powder on that stings and it leads to a bad experience, which is why a lot of dogs hate having their nails done. Um, this does not sting. It actually has a numbing in it and it stops the bleeding instantly. So I highly recommend this. Veterinary Formula Clinical Care Super Clot. It also has a disinfectant in it so the nail doesn't get infected. Okay, next topic is brushes. This is where the variety begins to occur that you're going to just have a huge variety of choice. What I'm gonna say is, if you're gonna groom your own dog, you need a pin brush. Uh, just one if you're grooming a at-home pet peak. Um, I have multiple, and I'll talk about why really quickly. Um, if you're grooming an at-home pet peak that has a typical pet Pekingese coat, meaning it's not exuberantly fluffy and huge, I think this is a nice brush to have. Um, the brand, this brand is Chris Christensen. It's a little expensive. It's about $30 for this brush. Um, but the length on this one is 20 millimeters, which is kind of a short length. But if you have a peak that has a pet coat, you don't need a really long bristled pin brush. Um, these have like a lifetime warranty. The pins are never going to come out. They're never going to rush, um, rust. I'm sorry. Um, so this is a really nice brush to have. The main thing on a pin brush you want to be careful of is do not get a pin brush. And the cheap ones are often like this. Don't get a pin brush where the ends of the bristles have a little ball on them. Get a pin brush where the pins are just straight pins. If you can see this in the video, see? They're just straight pins. That really helps in getting through the hair and not pulling excess coat out. So you just want a straight bristle pin brush. So this is a full oval Chris Christensen 20 millimeter. I use this on the tops of my dogs um, and I use it a lot and it has, it's, it's a medium, medium stiffness, it's a great brush. If you have a dog that has a thicker show type coat, especially up around the neck and mane area, so the show dogs have the thickest coat up on the front, um, this brush is, you know, quite, 
quite dramatically longer bristles. I think it's 40 millimeters. I mean, it's, it's really long. They're much longer than the others. And this is called uh, Maxi Pin. It's the name of the brand, Maxi Pin. Um, they come in different lengths. Um, this is, I think, uh, I again, maybe 35 millimeter. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't measured. But the point is, and it's the bristles are actually a little softer than the last brush, um, but it, they're very long. So what, what it does is it gets deep down in the coat for the thicker areas to make sure you're brushing down towards the skin. So if you have a dog with a thicker coat, you want longer bristles. Again, no ball on the end. They're just straight pins. And this is a very nice brush. This is another nice one for a, um, a, a pet quality coat. Um, this is actually a very soft bristle brush. So this one I recommend, like I use this on my bitch a lot because I said she has a very soft coat. Um, so this is a Madden brush. This is probably the best brand of brush you can buy, M-A-D-A-N. Um, and they come in all different lengths and stiffnesses. So this is actually not the brush that's recommended for most show Pekingese coats because it's too soft. This is more like a brush you would use on a Shih Tzu or a Silky Terrier or something, that, or Yorkie, something that has a soft, silky coat because these bristles are very soft. They move easy. But because I'm making this video for everybody, a lot of um, pet quality Pekingese have a thinner, softer coat. So if you have a dog with a thinner, softer coat, this is a great one. This is the purple... Uh, small size soft bristle Madden. You can also get this in full size. So full size would be more like this size, but the same bristles. This is small. This would be the full. Um, but these are this is the softer bristle Madden. If you want the Madden brush in the stiffer pin, that would be the red or the black Madden, and it would be the similar brush but with the stiffer bristles. So uh, lots of choices. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this one. I know I said you don't want anything with the little balls on the end, but I just got to give a shout out to the wet brush. This is a $5 Walmart brush. I use this on my own hair all the time. If you have children who scream when you brush their hair, this is the brush for you. This will brush through the tangliest, nastiest hair and not pull any hair out at all. It never pulls. So the thing this won't do is it won't help with tangles or mats because it'll just brush over the tangles and the mats. But this brush is great if you have a very sensitive dog who hates being groomed and screams when you brush them. This is the brush you should buy to introduce them to grooming. So if you have a dog that you just want to start teaching how to be groomed, who's dramatic and hates it, get this brush. These are the most flexible bristles on earth, and they'll think you're massaging them and not brushing them, which is great. So um, I use this on puppies. Uh, occasionally on other areas of the dog, but mostly I just want to talk about it as a first alternative to dogs that hate being brushed because they won't even think you're brushing them. They're just going to think you're massaging them and it's a great way to introduce dogs to grooming. Okay, the last brush I'm going to show you is this one. This is also a Chris Christensen brush. It's a nylon bristle brush it has two different layers of nylon, so it has a little bit longer, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus, a little bit longer, stiff, um, white nylon bristles, and then softer black bristles underneath. Um, this is a finishing brush. So this is for just brushing the top of your dog to smooth the hair. So it makes just the top layers. It doesn't get deep in their coat. It doesn't remove um, any sort of mats or anything, but it's awesome for like smoothing the top of their hair and making them beautiful on the top layer and silky smooth. I use this brush all the time. The other great thing about this brush is that again, like the last brush, it makes dogs think that you are massaging them because it doesn't feel like they're being brushed. It's more like you're petting them and they almost all lay there and love getting brushed with this brush. Okay, I'm going to move on to combs, but before I move on to combs, I'm going to say this. On the brush category, this is a slicker brush. A lot of people will tell you to buy a slicker brush. I'm going to tell you, until you get really good at grooming, don't buy a slicker brush. Um, slicker brush can damage the coat pretty badly. You can brush burn your dog with this coat because these are tiny, sharp, needle-like bristles. And if you get too close to the skin, you can like burn their skin with it. Um, people talk about it as a way to get 
through mats. That is true, but I'll talk about that in a video I do about mats. But I would say as a beginner groomer, um, I would not buy this brush um, to start with. Um, so you can get really cheap ones and buy one and, and think about it. And maybe, maybe in, if you watch my mat video and we talk about using this, you could use it for that. But do not brush your dog anywhere with a slicker brush unless you know what you're doing because you're going to damage their hair and you're also could hurt their skin. So that's my thought on slicker brushes. I have one. I have times I use it, but mostly no. Okay, now we're going to do combs and then I'm going to stop this video because it's gotten long and I like to ramble. So I'm going to do this one in multiple parts, which I didn't realize, but... Um, so we'll call this grooming tools part one, and we're going to end with combs. Okay. You need a comb and here's why you need a comb. Brushing your dog is not enough. You have a double coated dog. If all you do is brush your dog, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to brush the top layer and the bottom layer towards the skin is going to mat and you're going to be brushing over the top of mats and not realize you're doing it. So what you have to do if you're going to groom a Pekingese is you have to brush them first. Then you have to go back over the dog and what we call proof with a comb, which is where you comb down to the skin until you can see the skin and make sure that you've gotten all the way to the skin and that there's no mats. So proofing with a comb is essential. And I use um, four different combs to proof. This is the most standard comb. They call this a poodle comb. They use this to, to groom the poodle's dense coat. So these are very sturdy, evenly spaced, um, tine combs. Uh, this is, I think, the medium Chris Christensen comb. Um, it is worth it to spend more on a comb because, believe it or not, even though to our eyes they all look the same, the metal is smoother on expensive combs. And on a microscopic level, the cheap combs have metal that has a lot of imperfections in the tines and it's going to catch the hair and pull it out. So spend the money to buy expensive combs. If you buy expensive, nothing else, buy expensive combs. So this is a Chris Christensen medium. If you don't buy any other comb, you could just use this comb. You could proof your entire dog with this comb. That would be fine. I like this comb. Uh, this is actually a pretty cheap comb. I got this off of Chewy. Um, I use this comb only on my puppies to remove puppy coat. So it has pretty long bristles and sharp edges. It'll get all the way through that thick, dense coat down to the skin uh, when they're shedding out their puppy coat. Um, the handle is nice when you're removing excess coat, puppy coat or shedding coat, because you can hold it and kind of use your thumb and really get under and pull it out. I'll do that in another video, but I use this for shedding dogs and puppies. <clears throat> this is my version for shedding dogs that aren't puppies that are losing some coat, but you don't want to rip a ton of it out, but they're losing coat. This is a rolling tooth comb. So all these tines turn. You can't really see it, but I can feel it. So they're not fixed. They turn. So they can get through some thick shedding coat um, and remove it without removing too much of it. So on an adult dog where you're trying to get out the dead coat, but you don't want to remove excess hair, you're trying to leave as much as you can, this rolling tooth comb is great. I got this on Chewy all also, you just put in rolling tine or rolling tooth comb, okay? And the last one I'm going to show you before this video is over is my Pride and Joy and one of the most expensive things I own. This is my Utsumi Half Moon Comb. Um, this video mirrors, so you're going to have to pretend like you can read this not in reverse, but it's Utsumi, U-T-S-U-M-I. These are made in Japan. Every tine is hand placed. It's expensive. I'm not going to lie. It's an $80 comb, but it is worth its weight in gold to me because it's the only comb. You cannot find a generic cheap version of this shaped comb. Um, it is the comb that I use absolutely almost every day to get behind my dog's ears and elbows and hocks and butt cheeks. Um, without poking them. So this beautiful half moon shape, you can get right down behind the ears and elbows um, and comb out the areas that are the most uh, difficult as far as tendency to mat um, without like poking them with the edge of a flat comb. And you can get to, otherwise sometimes you miss the very cracks there where the matting occurs. So I adore this comb. Jess Whitaker, if you're watching this, she's a groomer who's my friend online. She's the one who recommended this comb, and I thank her so much because this is some of the best money I've spent on grooming tools. So this is the Utsumi Half Moon um, comb, and I adore it. Okay, so I've been a little longer-winded than I thought, so I'm going to make this video into multiple parts. 
So we're going to call this one part one of grooming tools and uh, stay tuned for the next installment. I will make another video. Uh, in the next video, we will be covering um, scissors, shearing tools, uh, grooming sprays, and uh, kind of extra just random essentials that I have in my grooming box. Okay, see you soon. Bye.